हरे कृष्ण महाराज थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच महाराज वी आर सो फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव यू टुडे प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल महाराज we are so thankful and grateful for you for giving your valuable time and association to us in this morning to enlighten us on the topic of shrimad bhagavatam canto 6 chapter 1 um, from 16th verse onwards prabhu maharaj please take over the call maharaj thank, thank you thank you basnesses <clears throat> om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shrimad Bhagavatam 6th canto 1st chapter text 16 Natata yagavan rajan kuyate tapad adibihi Translation, my dear king, if a sinful person engages in the service of a bona fide devotee of the Lord and thus learns how to dedicate his life unto the lotus feet of Krishna, he can be completely purified. one cannot be purified merely by undergoing austerity penance brahmacharya and other methods of atonement i have previously described purport tat purusha refers to a preacher of krishna consciousness such as the spiritual master shivanaratam das takur has says chadiya vaishnava seva nistara payeche keva without serving a bona fide spiritual master an ideal vaishnava who can be delivered from the clutches of maya this idea is also expressed in other places many other places primad bhagavatam 552 says mahat seva dwar mahur vimukte if one desires liberation from the clutches of maya one must associate with a pure devotee Mahatma. A Mahatma is one who engages 24 hours daily in the loving service of the Lord, as said in the Bhagavad Gita 9:13. Mahatma sumam partam daivam prakritim asritaham bhajanti ananayo manaso kyatva bhuta dim avyayam. Most of the preti. Those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the supreme personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Thus, the symptom of Mahatma is that he has no other engagement other than the service of Krishna. One must render service to a Vaishnava in order to get free from the sinful reactions. revive one's original krishna consciousness and be trained in how to love krishna this is the result of mahatma seva of course if one engages in the service of a pure devotee the reactions of one's sinful life are vanquished automatically devotional service is necessary to drive away an insignificant stock of sins but to awaken our devotional dormant love of krishna for krishna as fog is vanquished at the first glimpse of sunlight one sinful reactions are automatically vanquished as soon as one begins serving a pure devotee no separate endeavor is required the word krishna arpita prana refers to a devotee who dedicates his life in serving krishna not to being saved from the path of hellish life A devotee is Narayana Parayana, Vasudeva Parayana, which means that the path of Vasudeva, or the path of devotional service, is his life and soul. Narayana Parayana Sarve Nakushya Jnana Vidyuti. 
Such a devotee is not afraid of going anywhere. There's a path towards liberation in the higher systems and the path towards the hellish planets. The Narayana Parayana devotee is unafraid wherever he is sent. He simply wants to remember Krishna wherever he may be. Such a devotee is unconcerned with hell and heaven. He is simply attached to rendering service to Krishna. When a devotee is put into hellish conditions, he accepts them as Krishna's mercy. He does not protest, oh, I am such a great devotee of Krishna. Why have I been put into this misery? Instead, he thinks, this is Krishna's mercy. Such an attitude is possible for a devotee who engages in the service of Krishna's representative. This is the secret of success. Thus my Sri Gurudev Namaha, Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pranstaya Bhutale, Sri Mahti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itimamini, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaunda Balika Charine, Hirisesa Sunya Bhari Pasyatya Deva Satarine, Panchakalpa, Tarubis, Chakripa, Sindhu, Kaeva, Chakati, Tanam, Bhavane, Bhyo, Vaishnave, Bhyo, Namaha, Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Yitramanda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Sivasadi, Gaur, Bhakta, Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. My dear king, if a simple person engages in the service of a bona fide devotee of the Lord and thus learns how to dedicate his life unto the lotus feet of Krishna, he can be completely purified. One cannot be purified merely by undergoing austerity, penances, brahmachari, and other methods of atonement I have previously described. So here, here is the essence of the process of devotional service. Krishna is the author of devotional service. Devotional service is the science by which one can approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We use the word science because science means observation and experiment. So the observation is that here I am in this material world and I am suffering. I want to stop my suffering, but I have understood from my own experience that every time I try to make arrangements to stop my own suffering, I create more suffering or my arrangements simply leave me in the same situation. Therefore, I understand there must be a way to get out of the suffering. Uh, suffering is unnatural because the living entity is by nature a pure spiritual being. Jivar Sarupaya Krishna Nityadas. We are eternally connected with Krishna, and the process of connection is through the process of devotional service. Bhakyamama Vijanati Yavanya Statvi Tattvataha. Only by devotional service can Krishna be known. And the science of devotional service includes both activity and knowledge. And that knowledge is that through proper activity, one can gradually connect oneself from to Krishna in devotion and at the same time extricate oneself from the entanglement of material reactions. We are subjected to the results of the activities we perform in this material world, whether they are, they, the activities are pious or impious, or what it says, uh, acceptable or unacceptable, there is a reaction. And those reactions bind us to a particular mentality 
which produces a desire to continue in the same way. Now, unless we extricate ourselves from this uh, activity of performing activities, getting results, performing activities, getting results, it will continue to go on life after life, even beyond the end of this body. So devotional service is the science or the path by which one can get out. And Krishna explains that, that out of all those who apply in spiritual knowledge, one who worships me in devotion will ultimately attain perfection. But to approach Krishna, it is not easy. In fact, it's very difficult. Krishna is the supreme pure. And to approach the supreme pure, we also have to be pure. But in our state of material existence, we are impure. In other words, we're still caught up in the actions or reactions of the material life. Therefore, Krishna manifests himself as his mercy manifestation, which is called the spiritual master. The spiritual master is a person who has perfected the science of devotional service, who has realized Krishna through the process of devotional service, who understands how to practice the science and also how to teach that science to others. We see in this material world that if you want to be good at a particular activity, a particular talent, an ability, whatever it is, uh, you have to practice. But when you have a teacher who knows the science, knows what you're trying to learn, they can teach you. They can teach you music. They can now. We, nowadays we see people even want they want to learn how to drive a car. And so they go to an agency, sign up, and get a person to teach them how to drive cars. I see that all the time. You see all of these people learning how to drive cars by this agency that teaches them. And if you want to go to school to learn a subject matter, you find that there is teachers for whatever subject matter you sign up for. So in the same way, spiritual life applies that same principle. We need guidance, we need a teacher because material energy is unlimitedly mutable. Therefore, one cannot understand how to get out of material energy by one's own effort. It's not possible. And there's an element that even if one is expert at somehow or other getting out of the material energy, it's still not sufficient because they need what is called mercy. Mercy comes from the Supreme Lord himself. He is the reservoir of mercy, but he manifests his mercy through his pure devotee. So the one who accepts the shelter and the guidance of Krishna's pure devotee, the bona fide spiritual master, is in the position to receive Krishna's mercy. And that mercy is knowledge, freedom from material entanglement, and ultimately uh, awakening of one's relationship with Krishna. <laughs> so that mercy can only be given through the mercy manifestation. That's why the spiritual master is called the mercy manifestation of the Lord. So by Ian says here, even a sinful person, what to speak of those who are pious, the process works for everyone. And the process is three, as Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita. Tadviri patipathena pariprasyena sevaya upadekshyanti te gyanam gyaninas tatpadarshinaha. Paripathena, pariprasnena, and sevaya. In this verse, Krishna speaks this verse, he mentions three th things. You must approach a bona fide spiritual master uh, in a submissive way, 
with a desire to render, render service and inquire into the science of devotional service. So pratipatena means submissiveness. In the actual literal definition of pratipatena means to offer obeisances or fall flat at the lotus feet of a spiritual master. This humility is required in order to be receptive to the knowledge that is a given. One cannot challenge the knowledge or one cannot place themselves on an equal level and simply discuss things. One has to simply be ready to receive the knowledge given by the spiritual master. And that knowledge is understood through pariprasyena. Pariprasyena means inquiry. Who am I? Why am I in this material world? What is the purpose of life? Why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to die? These are all questions that an intelligent person will ask. And these questions lead to the answers that free one from the entanglement of material suffering and ultimately situate one in one's natural position of devotion to Krishna. And uh, sevaya means one should be eager and ready to serve at any time in any circumstance. Even if, as Prabhupada goes on to explain, even if the situation appears to be difficult, even if there appears to be some suffering that is coming by way of my execution of devotional service, it's not really suffering. It's just when we, just like when you go to a doctor, you may have some disease. So the cure may be surgical operation. Well, the surgical operation is necessary in order to uproot the disease. But the surgical operation may be difficult or uncomfortable or maybe even uh, painful, but it's necessary. So sometimes we experience the uprooting of our material attachments given to us by the instructions of our spiritual master as being difficult. But a devotee will think, oh, simply I'm getting purified. This is, uh, is Krishna has put me in this situation. It appears to be suffering, but actually what's happening is I'm coming to my natural state of pure consciousness. And using that analogy of an uh, operation in the doctor, if the, uh, when the operation is successful, the patient is cured, the disease is gone, and the patient is happy. So in the same way, when we get free from those things that block our relationship with Krishna, it causes us to continue to rotate in the cycle of birth and death our attachments in this material world, then gradually we start to feel a sense of peace and freedom. As that development, as that develops, one becomes naturally happy. And then one engages in devotional service and one is prasannatma. Prasannatma, na sosyati, na kongsyati, samasarve shubhuteshu. But bhakti levate one automatically becomes happy. We don't lament, we don't hanker for anything, and they are engaged in devotional service, and ultimately they enter into the spiritual realm. So this is all re all given to us by the bona fide spiritual master. So the scriptures enjoin very emphatically. Tad vigyarta gurum eva abhigatsche. The word abhigatsche means must. One must approach Krishna through his bona fide spiritual master. Just like, say, you want to meet the president of the country you're in, prime minister. Uh, you can't just walk into his office and say, here I am for a meeting. You have to go through his secretaries, you have to go through his ministers, you have to make an appointment, you have to somehow be accepted even for the appointment. So if it's even to see a big man in this world, 
there are many preliminaries, requirements also. So what to speak of the Supreme Lord? He is the creator of all big men. <laughs> he is the biggest of all. So one cannot simply crash into his association and think, oh, here I am. It's not possible. One has to qualify themselves by becoming free from the entanglement of material energy by being engaged in devotional service. There's no other way to approach Krishna. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, only by devotional service can I un be understood standing before you, thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my existence. So only by getting uh, guidance from Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master. Now the bona fide spiritual master is not there to give you a hard time. <laughs> He's there to simply instruct you and guide you. He's like a compassionate father who is always eager to help their children uh, become successful in life. So the bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind, but sometimes one has to receive instructions that are difficult to perform, or maybe we find them not only difficult, but we might find them that uh, I can't do it. <laughs> well, that's due to our attachments, that's all because the empowerment to carry out the instructions of the spiritual master comes with the instruction itself. Prior to that instruction, we may also mis misunderstand that the, the instruction is too difficult. Like it says, you know, you must fast on the codice, no grains, no beans, some austerity. And you may be attached to eating in a certain way and you find that this fasting is difficult. But when you do it, you actually become, uh, what we say, in better health. And at the same time, you're able to practice devotional service easier in that environment. So there are many rules. There are many regulations. All of these are necessary part of the instructions of the spiritual master so one can make advancement in devotional service. It says that we come to Krishna consciousness to learn and we have to learn to serve. And that service requires understanding on how best to serve and how we can make advancement by uh, applying the knowledge that we receive from the spiritual master. Now, we can read the scriptures and we can get some idea. And we may even be able to practice some of the activities in the scriptures. But material energy is very difficult. It's very complicated. And it requires us to learn how to live a life that is conducive to the execution of spiritual life or bhakti yoga. So that, that guidance, along with the knowledge of devotional service, is given by the spiritual master. And uh, the spiritual master, he comes in the six-week succession from Krishna. He knows the science. He practices it, he can teach it. He's not, he doesn't have any other occupation in this world. He simply is dedicated to serving Krishna by bringing conditioned souls to the lotus feet of the Lord. Even those who are so sinful. The Bhagavatam explains, Kirata, Hunan, Palinda, Pukasa, Ambira, Sambhav, that one kirata hunam palinda pukasa ambira kashyadaya, these are all 
different races that are below the Vanashram system. They are very sinful by nature. And even they can approach the supreme destination when they follow in the footsteps of a bona fide spiritual master. A good verse, yeah. Yene chipa pa upasraya sraya sudyanti tasmai babavishnave namaha. So here you see, this explained. And the word for word gives you the different provinces around the world where these different races are uh, existing. So anyone can approach the supreme destination if they are engaged in accepting the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. So the science is uh, not so easy to understand simply by reading books. Just like it said by one famous American transcendentalist, you read black and I read white. No, you read white and I read black. Uh, what, how does that go? How do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, we, may, we may read the scriptures and we might get different understandings from the scriptures. Everyone will read. Uh, day and night, you read black and I read white, but it doesn't mean that we are understanding the process. So uh, different persons interpret the scriptures according to their own understanding and understanding. But scripture is not meant for personal understanding. Because Krishna's scriptures can only be understood by the self-realized soul who teaches us how to understand it. When Srila Prabhupada presented his Bhakti Vedanta purports in all of his uh, writings, he very carefully read the verses, consulted with the previous acharyas who, who commented on these verses, understood their commentaries, added his own realizations and words according to the Western mentality. As Prabhupada said, I tried to give this knowledge so it could be understood by those who were born in Western countries. So uh, it's not so easy to simply read and understand, one has to be given that knowledge. So therefore, Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, these are called the three points of the triangle of truth. Guru teaches on the basis of Shastra. Sadhu lives the life according to the Shastras. When we study the life of the Shastras, and hear from the spiritual master based on the teachings of the Shastras, then we can uh, make understand everything and make progress in devotional service. So it's a very important that one takes shelter of Krishna in the form of his representative. Sometimes people think, well, I don't need anyone between me and Krishna. I have a direct relationship with Krishna. And that is true, but we do need someone. We have a direct relationship, but that direct relationship has been obscured or covered over by our association with matter. And therefore that relationship cannot be understood simply by our own endeavors. Therefore Krishna says, you must approach me by approaching me through my representative. He sets the process. And the process teaches us that in that, in, in that guidance with the spiritual master, we can overcome our material attachments. Uh, even, if, even if we have some sinful tendencies like envy or uh, criticism, duplicity, these are all sinful activities which, break, which block 
our progress in devotional service. The spiritual master can help us understand what they are, how to avoid them, and how to make progress in devotional service. So everything is there. Therefore, one should inquire, as Rupa Goswami explains, in uh, the Nectar Devotion, one should first take shelter of the spiritual master, work under his guidance, question him, understand the process, and when one feels confident one, and one has passed all of the tests of the spiritual master, then one can receive what is called initiation. Initiation connects one to the process of devotional service. Once one is connected to the process of devotional service, one carefully executes the instructions given by the spiritual master. And in due course of time, through that execution, one inquires from time to time how to make advancement in devotional service, how to overcome the obstacles that I faced in the execution of my devotional service, uh, questions that are relevant about Krishna, questions that are relevant about the, the execution of devotional service. So the spiritual master is there to facilitate our sojourn back home, back to Godhead. That's why he's called the mercy manifestation of Krishna. So this process is very wonderful. And not only do we have Krishna, but we have the spiritual master. And in our case, being members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, we have been blessed with his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who's not only a spiritual master, but he's an eternal liberated soul, an intimate associate of Krishna in the spiritual world, who has left the spiritual world, come to this material world to do the work of Krishna by elevating and uh, extricating the souls that are entangled in this material world. So it's a mission of compassion. And uh, Srila Prabhupada was so expert at teaching and instructing in such a way that he not only taught us what we should do, but he very carefully taught us what we should avoid and how we were being captivated by this material energy and how we were oblivious to that captivity. So Prabhupada taught us what to do, what to avoid and how to execute devotional service in such a way that progress becomes natural and easy. And of course, that everything centers around the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, service to the Lord by serving the devotees of the Lord, um, hearing regularly Srimad Bhagavatam, the science of Krishna consciousness, the pastimes of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan and in all of his other incarnations, and taking regularly foodstuffs offered to the Lord Krishna Prashadam. All of these simple processes, which are joyful by nature, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, this process of Krishna consciousness is susukam. Sukam means happy, but susukam means very happy or joyful. It's a very joyful process, chanting, dancing, taking prashadam, hearing, philosophical teachings and using our time and energy and doing things to, to, for, to serve Krishna in different ways. And it is not, we don't have to sit in a cross-legged position in some mountain area facing the north with our eyes rolled up to the top of our head, arms straight down on our side, practicing the breathing process of pranayama, pratyahara, and various others, austerities, fasting completely from food and performing that austerity for days and days on end. It's not like that. That in previous ages, people could do that easily. In this age, we can't. We're not, we're not qualified for such severe austerities, nor is it necessary. 
Lord Chaitanya said, Chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and dance when you feel happy, take nice Krishna prasadam, read books about Krishna, about devotional life, and use your time, energy. Everyone has a time, everyone has energy, everyone has abilities. Use those things in devotional service. The spiritual master is there to guide you in a practical way how to do all of these things and at the same time uh, correct you when you somehow deviate from the uh, true path. So one should accept the spiritual master with great eagerness. One should be eager to serve Krishna under the guidance of Krishna's representative. And this is the process of devotional service. It's very wonderful, easy, and it is it brings one to the stage of complete happiness, which means freedom from all material suffering and pure and transcendental knowledge. The soul by nature is sat, eternal, chit, full of knowledge, and ananda, unlimitedly happy. That awakening of these qualities that exist within the soul comes by way of serving Krishna through the execute through serving his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Wonderful, wonderful session, Maharaj, as always beautiful points to um, meditate upon and to reflect. Uh, basically, you're just um, sadhu, Guru Sadhu Sastra and just have humble attitude to, the, to and then serve Guru Maharaj and get the instructions and follow them and ask questions not in a challenging way, but in a humble and in a way to understand and uh, serve serve the guru and devotees, and that that's how you can um, ask questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, dear devotees, if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hands, or you can um, ask unmute yourself and start asking questions. Maharaj, is it okay, Maharaj? Do you have time to take questions, Maharaj? Yes, please. We we are here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, that but Maharaj. Uh, this Pralada not from Las Vegas. Uh, uh, well, Maharaj, it's, it's such an excellent association this morning with you, as always. <laughs> we get so much enlightenment, and our convictions become so fixed just by hearing from your mouth. And, you know, we get boosted in our practices, and, uh, you know, we understand the fundamentals, how one can reach Lord Krishna's service. Uh, uh, I just had a small query that, you know, we are conditioned souls come to this material world. And do we come because of uh, our previous uh, convictions uh, in, uh, in enjoying material world and then uh, get some association or somehow we come to bhakti or is it kind of predetermined? I understand in third canto, uh, Kapil Bhagavan says, Karmana Dev, uh, he says, Karmana Dev Papate. So, is it our, 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 uh, you know, desires or Lord Krishna's discretion that you know we get certain kind of mother <laughs> where we take birth and then our, our, you know, life of devotion is decided like that. I was personally very uh, fortunate that my mother. She read Srimad Bhagavatam when I was still in utero. <laughs> so that's how I was wondering then, you know, we, we are four brothers, but I don't know my other brothers. <laughs> they are not that much inclined to, and I'm sure she must have done that to them as well. 
So <laughs> I was just mm-hmm. a small query like that. So I would like you to enlighten me on that. Thank you very much, Prabhu. So I think I understood the question is, how do we come to devotional service? Yes. The, in essence, yeah. Well, it says that devotional service is causeless. Oh, causeless. In other words, causeless. One cannot trace out the mercy, the, the method by which one somehow or others come to devotional service. Sometimes we say that by previous pious activity, one qualifies themselves to come towards the path of devotional service. But even that falls short because there are many persons who are pious, but who do not take up devotional service. Yes. Um, The causeless aspect is that it is, it appears to be causeless, but it's, there is a cause. And the cause is Krishna in the form of the spiritual master. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual master is canvassing on behalf of Krishna. Please uh, make your life perfect, engage in devotional service. So he's, uh, he goes around, he speaks about Krishna. He invites others to hear. He uh, engages people in the service of the Lord. In other words, um, and what determines a person who somehow accepts and some others who also come in contact with the spiritual master, but do not accept. Um, That is, we call that uh, someone is fortunate. Somehow or other, they're fortunate enough to recognize that this is what I'm looking for, or even if they're not thinking it that way, they might think, well, let me see what this is about. Therefore, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, four types of people approach me. Those who are in distress, those who are looking for material gain, those who are curious, inquisitive, and those who are actually seeking knowledge of the absolute truth. Well, these four kinds of people approach, but some, once they fulfill their material desire, they they leave devotional service. Others, somehow or other, they understand that this is what they're looking for. Even if they come out of a distressed situation, they learn that actually the reason why I'm distressed is because I'm, I'm trying to enjoy the material world. So a lot of it has to do with association. By having the right association and somehow due to some person's past lifetime, pious activities, uh, association with devotees, just like sometimes we see that a person will perform an activity in one life and in the next life, due to that activity, it leads them into the association of devotees. Uh, Agyata Sukriti, unknowingly doing pious and devotional activities, somehow or other allows one to have the association of Krishna's bona fide spiritual master. So ultimately, one cannot really trace out. Ah, that's it. <laughs> that's the answer. Yeah. The reason why someone comes and someone doesn't. <laughs> we call it causeless mercy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Jyoti, Mah- Jyoti Mataji, please go ahead with your questions, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Danvad Pranam, uh, Maharaj Ji, Guru Maharaj Ji. My question is, uh, what are those aparads which are, which we do and uh, as a result we don't get the association in our bhakti? What are the aparads that we commit that causes us to distance ourselves from bhakti? Well, um, are you mean while we're performing bhakti or before? No, uh, say uh, I started my bhakti very late uh, and I started with 16 rounds. 
prior to that i was into meditation so um, i came into bhakti but whenever i am in the association means i feel that i like in the association so what because i am alone in the house so i i want to know what i actually did in the past or what i am supposed to do so that the association can happen because it's not happening that in that way like i'm expecting that to happen but i don't know what what actually i did so that i could pray or identify at least i should not repeat those mistakes that has happened in the past or in this present life well what can i say the qualities of a devotee allows one to serve nicely and avoid making uh, offenses so lord chaitanya gives the formula in the verse of the shikshastika prayers shrnada peace to nichena tayori vasa hishnuna amani nama mana dena kirtaniya sadana he said these are the qualities of a vaishnava which allow them to make quick advancement so one has to practice humility tolerance pridelessness and offering respect to all other living beings these four principles or qualities of a vaishnava allow one entrance into the process of chanting the hari krishna maha mantra with attachment so we need to practice humility being tolerant uh giving respects to others not wanting to be respected ourselves these four qualities are fundamental and chaitanya mahaprabhu mentions these as a prerequisite for making progress to the higher levels of devotional service and when one practices these four regularly one becomes what they call fixed or steady in the execution of one's devotional service one will, one will not be deviated by anything if they practice these four things in along with our service humility humility means not to be not to want the facility to be honored by others tolerance tolerance is there are there's two kinds of tolerance the tolerance that comes by way of living in this world we have to tolerate heat we have to tolerate cold we have to tolerate people around us we have to tolerate so many other things tolerance is a very important principle that allows one to continue devotional service without being interrupted learning how to be tolerant and we also have to we also krishna puts us sometime in a difficult situation just to purify us that's a kind of tolerance we accept that as krishna's mercy so tolerance is very important when we learn to see that in the hearts of all other living beings krishna is situated there therefore every living being is dear to krishna therefore we can give respects to all living beings because all living beings are parts and parcel of krishna they are uh, uh, spiritual by nature and not wanting to be glorified or honored ourselves these four qualities uh, allow us steady execution of devotional service guru maharaj ji uh, i don't want to argue but can i ask you something more uh, i would like to know if one is doing bhakti very sincerely and still uh, he but means i am talking about myself i have i have some realization i mean uh i feel that i have done something very wrong to or done very wrong aparad towards vaishnava that is the reason i am not getting the association i mean i am not able to actually have the association okay through internet i am able to connect to devotees they are very helpful but this is my realization this is the reason that i am not getting the association is this correct realization may be true may not be true you have to seek out the association of the devotees 
And the association of devotees means to keep Krishna in the center. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is the process of associating with devotees and rendering service to the devotees. When you say you think you've committed some apparatus in the past and you've been marginalized, you've, been, you've lost the association of devotees. So then you, know, you can offer prayers and pray to the Lord, and pray to your spiritual master that if I've committed any offense to the devotees, then please uh, forgive me and allow me an opportunity to again associate with devotees. If you know specifically someone that you've committed an offense to, then you should offer uh, apologies, offer uh, uh, offer to do service for that person. In other words, we may not know whether we committed offenses. I really yeah. don't know. Yeah. Because there's fences committed knowingly and there's fences committed unknowingly. The ones unknowingly, you just have to pray. Now, if you really want to do something, <laughs> there's, yeah, a pla- yeah. there's a place in Mayapur, it's called, it's called Koladweep. Uh, it's one of the nine islands of Mayapur. On that, uh, on that particular island, there is a, the ashram of Devananda Pandit. It says that if one goes to Devananda Pandit's ashram and stays there and offer prayers to the Lord there, one will be automatically freed from all the reactions of all apparats committed towards all other living entities. That's a special place. It's got special power. It's got special mercy. It was, it has been empowered by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly. But we may not be able to do, go there, so we should pray to Krishna. My dear Lord, if I've committed any offenses to any devotees, please forgive me. Allow me to make some type of retribution if it's possible. Please again give me a sincere prayer and repentance is enough to somehow or other again receive the mercy of the Lord. And again, um, Krishna wants to see how sincere we are. So if we made a mistake, we shouldn't try to hide it or cover it up and make, or make like it doesn't exist. We should just pray in a humble way. Just like I'll give you an example. One of my God sisters, uh, she, uh, she was chanting her rounds. She's a pretty advanced devotee. And she was noticing that she wasn't getting any, any taste or any attraction for chanting. It was something that was unusual. And she was thinking, I must commit it to some offense to some devotee. Therefore, I can't chant properly. So she was thinking. And then um, uh, she prayed to the Lord. And then the next day, she got a call from a friend of hers and said, you know, there's this one lady, she's very angry with you because you, you offended her son. Oh my God. Because you've done that, um, you know, this is, this is the situation. So by her sincere prayer, she got the answer to find out what was the reason why she wasn't able to taste the sweetness of chanting. So I think if you sincerely pray, and I use the word sincerely from the heart, then Krishna will help you overcome that uh, anartha, or that difficulty. Yes, I do. Because devotional service is not like if you do something wrong, you're punished and that's it. No, you can, there's always retribution, there's always a chance to come back, but you have to be sincere. That's all. Guru Maharaj Ji, yesterday we had a session and uh, my question remained unanswered. My question is, if uh, if say one is a priest who is uh, doing a deity workshop throughout wait, his life. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you're talking a little too fast and I missed some of the words. If you could slow uh, down okay, a little bit. It yeah, it's, it's just because of the communication by this computer. It makes other sounds in the background and you can't hear the words clearly. 
okay yes. say if one is a priest and he is doing devotional service uh, like he is worshiping through dt work dt service and uh, throughout his life so uh, how he is uh, advancing through all the stages say after even if one reaches to highest level again there are many stages so one life even he is sincerely doing his service he is chanting his round sincerely he is doing everything what is ordered but how he will progress through all the stages because he is not attached to any other limbs so if we do one work or as a uh, devotional service repetitively it becomes bore but he is doing throughout his life so how he will be advancing i mean what are the factors of advancing well the factors of advancing is one is becoming detached from the the uh, the tendency to try to enjoy material energy one starts to feel um uh, a sense of disgust about trying to enjoy material energy one gives up the desire to enjoy this is this is a very big symptom the other one one is developing the qualities of a vaishnava these are also indications one is becoming humble tolerant patient prideless one starts to become simple one becomes peaceful one becomes eager to serve all of these symptoms or indications of advancement in devotional service and if these are happening advancement is happening <laughs> so we will not know actually which stage we belong but we, this this we should take care of this uh, factors like developing the qualities in ourselves we know yeah. where we but if, if you understand the different stages and the symptoms the or characteristics of each mm -hmm. stage you can see where you are and where you need to go if you're steady in your devotional service and you're not deviated by happiness and distress or circumstance then you're on the platform of nishta nishta means steadiness if you're feeling happy all the time then you're 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 indicating on the platform of ruchi ruchi means that the soul is feeling satisfied and happy in all the activities of devotional service so these are some symptoms so you have to see the bhakti vinoda core gives the science in a very uh, step by step way seeing the different stages there's nine stages of bhakti mm -hmm. and you can you can see through observation and asking your spiritual master well what stage am i on where do i need to go from here what's holding me back from making the next stage okay thank you guru maharaj ji please accept my humble obeisances ah, thank you so prabhupad ki jai i'll return i'll return in one minute i just have to let someone into the apartment i'll be right back Yeah, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, you know, uh, since we have less time, you know, Maharaj has to do a lot of things. And uh, so that's why we don't want to take away all his time. So please keep your questions very short. If you cannot put them in the words, please write them down first. And when uh, you are okay with that, then just ask in one or two sentences. Thank you very much. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yes. Asha Mataji, please go ahead with your questions, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I'm Asha from Canada. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Uh, uh, His Divine Grace Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada has written in the book, The Journey of Self Discovery, that uh, Lord Krishna is the cosmic uh, manifestation is manipulated by a supreme spirit which is lord krishna so my question is that that uh, uh, when you have the eagerness to recognize the truth when you have the eagerness to recognize the fortune which is his grace where does the desire where does the love where does the devotion and faith come from if we are not this body and mind because 
because his divine grace, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada has mentioned in the book, The Journey of Self-Discovery, that we are not this body and mind, we are all spirit souls. So just wanted to check on that because I see that most of the devotees and most of my siblings or my cousins, most of them whom I have met, they are all pious. They are all pious by their activities in this life. And I am not at all pious. My body's journey was not so pious. But the experience and the eagerness and inclination to know the truth, who I am, why am I here, and who is the one suffering, is so much in me. So just wanted to know, Maharaj, that, you know, uh, is this all his grace because he is the one who is the supreme uh, spirit and who is running the whole universe? Yes, you're getting mercy. That desire to learn, to, to make advancement is coming from the mercy of the, of the, of the Lord through the mercy of the great souls. Somehow or other, due to your association with great souls, that, that, that has awakened within you this desire. Once the desire uh, is awakened, then the process of devotional service is the means to fulfill that desire. Yeah, because I have seen that many of the Gurujis or many of the Masters or many of the Saints or many of the pious people who have been in devotion, but few of them have got the self-realization of who am I or who is the one, uh, whether we are the body or not the mind. So few of them has got the realization. And I could also find the answer by his grace that nothing in my life which happened until now that would I wished for. Nothing has happened that I wished for. Just everything was happening and the life was going on. So my, my just, you know, I was just wonder struggling that how come my life was never pious, but then the eagerness and the willingness to know who am I and why am I here is so much that even my sibling whose journey was so pious asked me that I don't understand your journey. So for me, I was like wonderstruck that do I really, really, am I eligible for this? Like, am I eligible? He has given me more than what I deserve. Now you can just say it's causeless mercy. It's coming from the Lord. There's something in something in your activities that somehow or other has brought you to receive this mercy of eagerness. That eagerness is not something that comes so easily. It's something you've done in the past. It's some association you had either in this life or in the past life. And, and in due course of time, when the opportunity is ready, that awakens, and that awakens in, in such a way that you can now move forward to fulfill that. So um, consider it the mercy of the Lord, that's all. <laughs> uh, how can I find the right guru? Like, how do I know? Like, everything is happening as it has to happen, because everything what happened was not as I wished for. So, uh, did, Maharaj, do you think that that will also happen by his grace? Will 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 he send the guru or do I have to find? Because everything happened in life as it was happening. Nothing happened as I wished for. There's two things that it's called your endeavor and Krishna's mercy. When the, in the past time of baby Krishna, when Mother Yasoda wanted to tie him up because he was stealing butter and breaking the butter pots and she was unable to do her household chores, she uh, decided to tie Krishna up and she took some rope. But every time she tried to tie him to the grinding mortar, the rope was two inches too short. And she kept adding pieces of rope onto the rope and it still remained two inches too short. Finally, at one point, Krishna agreed, and this is the point, he agreed to be tied up. And then when she made that effort, she was able to do that. So we see two principles here, our personal endeavor and Krishna's permission or Krishna's mercy. So you make that effort to find a spiritual master. And when Krishna sees that you're actually sincerely trying for a spiritual master and you qualify yourself, then Krishna will send the spiritual master. It says when the candidate is ready, 
the master appears. So to qualify and to be a candidate, to be ready, uh, what, what should I do, Maharaj? Because you I have should, not done anything yeah. that I wanted. It's all happening. So I don't know what to do now. You, can, you, you continue to, the process of hearing is the process of learning. You hear, you continue to hear. Hear from the books, hear from the, the lectures given by various spiritual teachers. Keep hearing. And then you may also find that after some time you're attracted to hear from a particular person. This will happen, or maybe even two people. And then you start hearing from them more regularly. So the process is you have to continue to hear. And in the Christian tradition, they give a little bit of a statement. Knock and the door will be open. So we have to be eager to get in by making an effort to continue to hear to continue to look for a spiritual master by taking the association of those who are on that platform. And Krishna will show you, he, does, he shows you personally within the heart, here is your spiritual master. But if you're not looking or eager or not trying to hear regularly, you may take a long time. No. Okay, Maharaj, I'm hearing to Radhanath Swami for the last one year. I will follow that. Yes. Okay, yeah, Maharaj. Continue. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Radhika Raman Prabhuji, please go ahead, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Okay, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Your your voice is somewhat echoing. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. My pranam is my pranam in your lotus feet, Maharaj. Can you ask a question? Yes, Maharaj. Are you able to hear me? I am, but we have to talk really slow because if the audibility no, is no, it's okay, no, no, it is okay now, Maharaj. Yeah, that's, we can hear you, Prabhu. Please just hear. Oh, so my question is, Maharaj, once we once we take initiation, now, Maharaj, all karma will take our spiritual master, and after taking initiation, also we have seen some disease will come. So, what is the reason behind, Maharaj? We have seen what was coming. Maharaj, after taking initiation, all karma will take our spiritual master. Then why should again disease will come after taking initiation also? Why again disease will come for devotees? Disease? This is for past karma. Disease, you said? Yes. Uh, just like uh, cancer, corona. Mm -hmm. Why karma mm -hmm. once will take? Yes, Maharaj. Well... <laughs> Janma Mitya Jaravari, Dukkha Doshana Darshana. This world is, it has four characteristics that are inherent birth, old age, disease, and death. Even the body of a, a devotee, even a pure devotee, may also become diseased. But one in devotional service is not disturbed by that. They go on with their devotional service because they know they're not this body. They simply have to tolerate it. So these things do happen. You take precautions, like you live in the world, there is a, a, a protocol you should follow to keep yourself healthy. So you follow that. But even if you get disease despite following that, then you, you just have to accept that that's, this is somehow or other coming as, an, as a way to make you more surrendered in devotional service. Uh, just like I preach in jails and Many of the people that we reach in jails, many of them after practicing devotional service say, well, you know, if I, if it wasn't for me coming into jail, I don't think I would have been engaged in devotional service. So the fact that I'm in jail was actually good because I met a devotee, I met a spiritual master, and I'm now practicing the process. So if you categorize happiness and distress by material uh, evaluations, oh, this is good and this is not good. 
disease could be good because it could be an impetus for becoming more fixed in devotional service. Many times that's true. When people get sick, they become more serious. So uh, material happiness, material distress, they're all the same. Even material happiness can take you away from Krishna consciousness if you accept it in that same spirit. So don't worry about the material. It will come and go. Just stay fixed in devotional service. Okay, Maharaj. Maharaj, how to uh, satisfy my spiritual master, Maharaj? How to satisfy my spiritual master? How to how what? To satisfy, how to satisfy to my spiritual master, Maharaj? What how, to to satisfy, how to satisfy your spiritual master? Yes, Maharaj, yes. How to yeah. qualify? Prabhupada also said that what pleases the spiritual master the most is if, if you develop your love for Krishna. Just try to love Krishna, that's all. Krishna is lovable. Give your love to Krishna. When the spiritual master sees that you're developing in your love for Krishna, he's happy. Because that's why he's there, to teach you how to love Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Dandra Hare, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Um, thank you so much, Maharaj. I have one question, Maharaj. Um, I'm so fallen and I'm so, um, due to conditional nature, I'm having struggle. Due to the conditional nature, I'm having struggles in keeping consistency in my practices in hearing, chanting, or um, thing. I have the intention, I have the desire, but somehow or the other, and sometimes there's something, different yeah, there's, something that, there's something in your life that doesn't belong there that keeps, uh, keeps interrupting your devotional service. You have to see what that is and remove it. Something mm -hmm. is interfering with your, your steadiness in devotional service. Some material attachment, some wrong association, some, some quality that is not conducive to devotional service. You have to see through the mercy of the spiritual master, try to understand what is it that is blocking my progress in devotional service? Am I uh, feeling envy towards others? Am I too greedy for material happiness? Am I uh, attached to material things too much? Um, am I getting the wrong association? And by that association, I'm, I'm losing my enthusiasm and devotional life. These are different ways you can evaluate. But we have to see by taking inventory, what is it about my life that's causing me not to make progress? Okay. If you're not sure, ask your best friend. <laughs> that's one way. Ask the devotees, they can help you. Okay. I was with Bhakti Tirtha Swami and he would do exercises when he would give a class and he would say to the devotees, all right, now you pair up in twos and you tell each other what about each other that uh, what you need, what does that other person need to do to make progress in devotional service? Sometimes you can't even see your own reasons why you're blocked, but maybe others can. People who you can trust, people who are your friend, people who are knowledgeable. And if you can't find anyone, just ask, just ask the spiritual master. Yeah, I'm, I'm still aspiring, Maharaj. I haven't initiated, got initiation yet, but uh, I see that I'm some, day, some days are good, some days are bad. I think I'm going there and then again coming back. It is going in cycles. So I'm unable to understand where I was stuck and then how can I make progress? I I can't say, I don't know you well enough, yes, but you just also observe your personal habits. Are you attached to 
drinking tea or coffee or staying up late watching movies. <laughs> Thank you so much, Krishna. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just using these as examples. I see people uh, who are, you know, they have this thing that they can't give up. It seems like a small thing, but it's it's causing them to break their attention on Krishna and and then some some idiosyncrasy, some simple attachment. It causes us uh, to slow down in our progress of devotion. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please. Bless me, Pra Maharaj. Do we, uh, do we attach to watching Bollywood movies? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so Maharaj, she doesn't watch movies. <laughs> No, no, Maharaj. No coffee, tea, and watching movies. But I think maybe envy. I think there are a couple of things that I might I can look into myself, Maharaj. Thank you so much for giving me this valuable um, insight and where to look for. If you take it, yeah. If you just make a little inventory, you'll start to indicate. You get indications of what it is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maybe it's going to bed too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, that is one thing. That can, that, can, that, can, that, can, that can put a big damper on your spiritual life if we take rest too late. Yeah. Better to take rest before 10 o'clock every night. Get up early by 4 o'clock and then perform your devotional activities. Staying up late is, is one way to, to minimize and destroy your spiritual practice. Okay, Maharaj, sure. Definitely, that is one thing. Definitely, there, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Please uh, bless me and be um, your mercy, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Sure. Hare Krishna. Um, Shukakar Krishna Das Prabhuji, hey. please go ahead. Um, uh, Shamgori Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Anur Pranavagosh. Wonderful class, Maharaj, um, about the glorification of spiritual master and the Necessity of spiritual master, very, very wonderful class as always, mother. Thank you so much. Somebody was asking on the call, like, um, uh, when will I get my spiritual master if uh, they don't have, if they don't have spiritual master, how they are going to get? They can ask someone who is on the same, um, you know, who is also advanced devotee. Someone who they can trust, someone they, who they know. I mean, we have a whole society of devotees. You just, you have to associate and then develop relationships. Based on these relationships, you always have someone to talk to. In the if your spiritual master is not available for whatever reason, maybe he's, he's departed the planet, or you just can't reach him, or he doesn't respond for whatever reason, then uh, you can talk to his god brothers or someone else. Happens to me all the time. People come to me about questions, and I, they're not my they're not they're not my disciples, but they just come because they need they want someone to talk to. So we do that. We don't make distinction. Well, we only we only uh, give knowledge and directions to our our direct disciples. No. Anyone in, anyone in Krishna consciousness is eligible to approach anyone in the uh, in the entourage of Srila Prabhupada's uh, uh, devotees and get some help. If you, if you can't get help from one person, then you think of find someone else. But the help is available. Why? The help is available because Krishna wants you to proceed. So he will help you in one way or the other. So you have to make that effort. Yes, Maharaj, thank you so much. Also, we need help after initiation. Also, you know, somebody should be there to look uh, what is the progress going on. Yeah. Sometimes it's, not, it's not like once you're initiated, it's all nice, you know, then you get tested. <laughs> Krishna is going to see how sincere you are by allowing Maya to test you. <laughs> Thank you. 
to go back home, back to Godhead means to pass all the tests. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How are we going to pass all the tests? <laughs> I'm talking about myself, you know. I don't know. Well, even if you fail the test, you get another chance. Yeah, we can do that's good. Yeah. Krishna is so merciful. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya is even more merciful. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, there is one more raised hand from Shukakar Krishnadas Prabhuji. Is that okay, Maharaj? Do we have time? Yeah, I, yeah we have time. Hare um, Krishna Chandra Mali Maharaj, please accept my humble and just to lotus feet. Uh, Guru Maharaj, you are so great, you are so wonderful. But Guru Maharaj, you told Ma Maharaj, I got one question. One is uh, by doing our uh, chanting and other things and following the rules, uh, we are able to burn our sins, past sins, color of the karma and all. But at, at that point, to get pure devotional service, uh, you need to see that no aparad is done and it's becoming closer to Krishna and we forget ourselves as body, only as a soul, as a servant, as a dog of Krishna. So that point theoretically understood, but how to get uh, means advancement in the pure devotional service? This is what I'm looking for, Maharaj. Saru Sangha. <laughs> Sarusanga, Sarusanga, Sarvasastri Hoy, Lava Matta, Sarusanga, Sarvasiri Hoy. So today that's I can the, expect that's the, fast, that's the fast path. That's the fast path. Please, fast track. Please, please bless me, Maharaj. <coughs> your, your blessing is required. You are such a pure devotee, the disciple of Sina Prabhupada. I need your kripa, I need your dust. Only Kripa Siddhi can help. I'm so unfortunate, Maharaj. Please, take bar, just save me, Maharaj. Please, Maharaj. I beg you. Well, we have best wishes that Krishna will somehow or other give you the opportunity to, that any, for anything you need to make your progress in devotional service fast. Dasoham Tavasmi, Maharaj. So nice. My obeys at your lotus feet. Please accept it, Maharaj. Please. So nice, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. There is one question from Asha Mataji. Asha Mataji was inquiring if there is a possible to get... Asha Mataji was inquiring that is there a possibility to get Maharaj's email address so that is there any way to get in touch with Maharaj? Yeah, uh, Shyamagori, she has my email address. She can give it. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, you can just um, contact her. Yeah. Okay, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Very beautiful. Very, yeah, very I don't perfect. It's nice to see everyone. It's so nice. You are a nice group. You turn on your cameras. <laughs> it's so nice when they can see all the devotees. And I know you're out there. Otherwise, we just see names. That's all. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Good. Any good. person after me. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very nice. Oh, such a, an entourage of so many Vaishnavas. Wonderful, wonderful. Hare Krishna. Thank you. My obeisances to everyone. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for so, such a thank, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj, for your thank you. Really happy to you. Have, I want to see I you hope to have to some personal association with some of you very soon. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, we are very much looking forward to Maharaj. Let's pay our thanks to Maharaj.